uh, what I've done already is I've purchased two solar panels. These are Helios brand 260 watt uh, 60 cell solar panels. I got those for $150 each. And then uh, coincidentally, a friend of mine actually found some microinverters, believe it or not, at a salvage yard. And so I asked him to buy a couple for me. Uh, they were cheap. And a big part of that is because there was really no way of testing them. Uh, I'm planning on using Enphase microinverters uh, for my system. I'm still just a little up on the air whether I want uh, the 215 or the 250 watt microinverters. There's a difference in price and how they behave is actually just a little bit different. So let's take a look at uh, microinverters and the solar panels and I'm also gonna introduce uh, the Enphase Envoy, which I just purchased and I got that up running yesterday. So this is an Enphase 250, uh, M215, 215 watt microinverter. Uh, the main characteristics of it is that one goes on each and every solar panel, uh, which is advantageous in terms of if one solar panel is shaded, uh, the others are completely unaffected. It also has um, some nice software so you can know how much power is coming from each and every individual solar panel. When we look at here, we have a set of MC4 connectors. Uh, these connect directly to the solar panel. And on the other end is our trunk cable. This is a special uh, cable uh, designed by Enphase. If you look, there's four pins in there. That's hot, hot, neutral, and ground. That's your standard American uh, 240 volt AC power. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is these connectors are MC4. That's the exact same as what's on my solar panels. Now there's another style connector, very, very similar, called H4, the Amphenol H4 connector. Although I can tell you, I've run into a problem with that. So this is the only inverter that I have with the MC4. The other two inverters, I've got three of these total, have that H4 connector. Now another funny thing is this mounting tab. If you look, it's kind of a hook shape. That is actually something designed for the ZEP uh, mounting system. Um, I do not have the ZEP mounting system, so these inverters will not mount straight to my uh, iron ridge racking the way the standard inverters were. Um, but for something to exper experiment with, hey, great. But let's take a look at these little connectors on the solar panel, uh, the inverters that are on the solar panels. Okay, so what we have here is an inverter which is hooked up to a solar panel right now. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this in the video or not, but these connectors are slightly different than these connectors. Uh, these are the Amphenol uh, H4. It actually says Amphenol right here, kind of hard to see. Uh, these are all locking connectors. The whole idea is uh, for safety so that, you know, some kids couldn't come along if you had a ground mount uh, system, for example, and just unplug uh, the solar and get shocked. Uh, even there, when you're using these microinverters, this, this is all lower voltage, you know, a, a single panel is going to be like around 30 volts, for example, so shock really isn't uh, too much of an issue there. Uh, these connectors lock right here, and with the MC4 connector going into the H4 Amphenol connector, I cannot get these back apart, no matter how hard I've tried. Uh, this one I can, but not this one, and there's all sorts of different uh, unlock tools and I've not been able to get any of them to work at all. It's kind of driving me crazy, and it's especially hard to move a solar panel around when you have a microinverter hanging off of it, so I'm not very excited with that. But the upside is that I did get uh, these two microinverters and the solar panels going, and I'll show you how I did that. If you have any tips on how to unlock uh, an MC4 from an H4, please let me know, because uh, none of those things actually seem to work. And I'm going to disconnect this inverter to show you the trunk cable, so I may as well uh, uh, film it, show you how it's done. First of all, uh, I'm disconnecting the AC power. I've already thrown the main breaker to off. And then I'm going to use this disconnect tool. And what happens, there's these two holes with clips that hold this in there. So I need to push those in. They push those release clips. And then I can disconnect the microinverter and pull this back out. So now the microinverter is disconnected. So for these Enphase microinverters, uh, they use a special cable or a, a trunk cable, which I have a piece of in front of me. Uh, this cable is considered two drops. It has two of these connections. 
And what you would do is buy a cable that has as many connections as you need for your array or at least each leg of your array. So on my garage, I'm gonna have enough room for uh, three rows of eight solar panels each. So what I'll do is I'll get three sections of cable, uh, each with eight connectors on it, and one inverter will, will plug into each of these connections. Now when you get these, uh, they're just covered with a dust cap that just keeps dust off of the electrical connection. But if you look in there, uh, it has the, the hot, hot neutral ground uh, connectors and it plugs right in. And what's at the end? Well, it's just bare wires. So in this case, I just have those covered up with wire nuts, but you can see uh, the red and the black, the hot and the hot for 240 volt power, uh, the neutral and the green ground. And the green ground actually also acts as the, the system ground in this instance because of how Enphase does the grounding. Now, what I've done here is at the other end, um, I have an open junction box. I just have the connectors going in there. I just have them spliced together because I've built a test rig at the other end. Um, I just wired on a NEMA 1450 connector because that's what I already have in my garage for 240 volt power for my electric car charger. So what this means is I can plug the microinverters into these connectors and then directly into my wall uh, run that through a 240 volt uh, circuit breaker so I have the ability to turn the system on and off. Uh, and then by leaving this open, it also means I can get my clamp meter in here so I can actually check how much current is running through the system. And I just realized that with all my monkeying around in this, I just made one of my wires loose. I'm gonna have to make sure to fix that. So what I've got here is just sort of an experimental test rig. Uh, when this is all fully installed, the complete permitted system on the roof, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have three sections of cable like this. Uh, each one is going to go into a sealed uh, weatherproof box like this with a watertight connection on it. Of course, uh, cover installed and everything. Uh, and then inside of conduit, I'm going to use 12 gauge cabling going from one box to the next to the next. Then the cabling is going to go uh, inside conduit down the side of the building through a disconnect and then to my main circuit breaker and in through a 30 amp circuit. Um, I'm actually going to be using two legs of power on the roof uh, just because otherwise I'm going to be going over my 20 amp maximum. So I'll have uh, two circuits. They'll go into that combiner disconnect box. I'm using a midnight solar uh, disconnect and then that'll go into a 30 amp circuit breaker. Now let's say you have an entire row of solar panels and then with the same cable you want to go up to the next row and then back across. A uh, problem you're gonna have is that the cable isn't going to reach. Um, it's, it's so about 40 inches from one of these to the next um, and that's for the portrait orientation of solar panels. Now there's other cable you can get that's actually designed for landscape and that has a, a longer reach between the individual drops. But if you want to go from uh, a row up to the next row, for example, what you would do is you would just skip one drop. And in that case, what you have to do, because this is a live connection, is you do need to permanently cover it and seal it. Now, when you get these, these just have a little dust cover. This is not weatherproof. Uh, so there's a specific um, a weatherproof cap that you snap in place and it stays there permanently sealing everything off. I'd prefer not to do that because this cable is relatively expensive. It can be up to $20 per drop. So just going, you know, another 40 inches, that's another 20 bucks because you got this connector on here plus whatever the cost of that sealer is on there. Uh, the other thing is uh, the finished terminated end also gets a special dedicated connector on there that uh, seals it off and is weatherproof as well. You know, you don't just leave wire nuts like this out in the rain, of course.